without further ado, first of all, do we have any Power Rangers fans in the room? How about fans of Jason David Frank? Well, what do you say we get him up here? Jason David Frank, everybody!
31 from 35. 35 and older. So anyone under the age of 99. You guys are thinking about it. Oh, that's me, me, me. All right, sorry, sir. Go ahead. But uh, what would you say was the greatest part of getting to do that show? You know, being, you know, did you get to be president? Was it driving your car real fast? Was it maybe money to start a charity or you know, school or? The best whatever? thing I think about being a car ranger is that it always gets to me like makes you think about things is when you're on set and make a wish foundation calls and, and the, the kid's last dying wish is to meet you. You're kind of like, really? Wow. I mean, you know, and uh, and to meet so many kids and just I think to be a hero to so many different people and, and healthy ones or unhealthy ones, we're all you're the same. And I think that's the biggest thing about being a celebrity. It's not about, um, you know, it wasn't the money, it was it's more the passion about, you know, what I, what I do and and like my wife can tell you, when it comes to MMA or it comes to filming or it comes to anything, I might go through a lot of different sports or you know skydiving, whatever it is. I'm passionate about it, and if you're passionate about something, you have to stick to it. Don't listen to the people that tell you, "Oh, you'll never be anybody. Oh, you'll never be able to do that." If you're an artist or a costume, whatever it is, we all have certain talents. You have to stick to it and don't believe what people say because they'll put doubts in your head and it'll make you think. You know, and even with the New York Comic Con, you guys are so awesome that when we went to New York Comic Con, it looked like an hour. They didn't think I had a huge following. You guys slammed my line. It was six, seven hours wait. And everyone was like, wow, Power Rangers actually has fans. You know? <laughs> so you guys make the show, and she knows every every night, a couple of hours a night, I'll you know, do social media and talk to you all and all that stuff. So, But I want to thank you guys for being fans. It's the best thing is to be here and have fans, actually, you know, to talk to. <laughs> I do want to share my laser. When you see this around, around the con, that's me. Like a little tooth fairy. Flying. So the laser of love, right? When the laser shoots you, you gotta go, ah, oh, all right, here we go, ready? And cut, let's do it one more time. All right, Constantine's the only one that's. Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, Hi. Hi. I was wondering if at the time of the first Power Ranger, at the time of the first Power Rangers shows, if you weren't in it, would it be a show that you would have been watching at the time? Oh, um, it's interesting because I don't really watch TV. Even with my wife, when I eat like a bowl of cereal, I'll just turn off television. I don't know why, but I just, um, I'd rather be in them than watch them. But, um, <laughs> you know, it makes sense. But, um, but at first when, I, when we first saw the show, it was kind of like it didn't make sense. You know, it was like kind of cheesy, and I thought about it before. I told you all before, kids love cheese sandwiches, cheese sticks, macaroni and cheese, and I was thinking Power Rangers cheese. So they're going to love it. And uh, I think the show was cheesy. It was cool. I probably would watch it, but I would probably, every time I watch like MMA or karate movies, or, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I could have done that, or we should have done this. So I'd probably watch it for, because of the martial arts and the wonderful different colors that kids get hypnotized, like the tell me tubbies. Oh, colors! Um, first You're not going to ask me, my wife, any questions like, do I run around the house just in a Power Ranger helmet? No, no, I, I promise. No, 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 no. Um, first of all, say, make my dragon dragon grow. Make my dragon dragon grow! Alright, never mind. Sing all the chunks around the house. Alright, okay, continue, sir. Continue. Alright, it's all good. Um, first of all, I've been a fan since I was six. It is a thrill to be talking to you right now. Are you still a fan after what I said? Absolutely. Thank you. Even more so. Even more so. Oh, God. All right. Thank you. Your great range has got jokes. That's awesome. <laughs> um, at what point when you were on the Power Rangers TV show did it really sink in, wow, I am a pretty big cultural icon now? I don't know if it ever really sunk in. I think when we did the Universal Studios, the, the, the place was just packed. You know, and um, being in Hollywood, you could totally just go off the other end and think you're big time and you know, want more money and you get fired from the show, that type of thing, right? Um, but I was just, I was just about the side show with peace comments. All right, never mind, never mind. Let's talk. Let's not talk about the original Rangers. All right. Um, I was when I was 
When I was at Universal Studios, it was crazy, all the kids and all that stuff. But I think the thing what really made me wonder and say, hmm, was when I was in Israel, and um, we did a tour in Israel, and everywhere, and I know Israel, whatever, they had like machine guns and guards, and I was like, dude, you're really like causing a scene. Like, I could probably walk down the street and not like even get recognized. So they're like, you know, with guns and all that stuff. And it was kind of annoying, but we did like a thing called Tuba Swap, which would plant a tree. So I planted a tree, and I was like, all right, the wave and the bodyguards just like picked me up and like ran me to the car. My feet were dangling. I'm like, seriously, just put me down. Like, I don't walk to the car, you know? Um, and that was a long time ago. And I think just going to different countries, and then we went to Italy for, you know, um, our honeymoon, and people were like, ooh, the power range. I was like, what? This is on in other countries? But um, <laughs> I think it really starts hitting me now to see the amazement of like all you guys that have grown up with the show continue to be fans, and you guys make the show what it is, that's why I always tell Saban they need to make like a dark, gritty, Green Ranger type of series for this age group, you know what I mean? And, uh, so, who knows, you know, 20 years later, Power Rangers is still going, whoever would have thought 20 years ago, a little kid, you know, four year old, I want to go up and get Power Rangers, okay buddy, and he really did, you know? So whoever would have thought that. Speaking of the dark one, are you going to do MMPR? The fan oh, the fan movie? movie? Yeah. Uh, the thing with the fan movie, I, you know, I know Dominic, that I give those guys credit for hammering this show out. The only thing that concerns me is they don't have the rights to use it. And if I get involved, they don't have the rights. Saban is the type of company where they own the rights. And even though it's a, it's a non-profit film, that's what they're doing is trying to, to make the movie to show Saban. Now, I give those guys credit. I think they're very talented and all that, but I do know Saban. Saban will not give up rights to so-and-so, to a nobody, and I don't mean that in a bad way. They own it. Hyam owns the show. It's kind of like saying, hey, can I have a couple billion dollars my way? Sure. They have their own production company. They would make their own movies and hire where they want. So the thing that concerns me about that is that they don't have the rights and they're afraid to get involved and something happens. You know what I mean? So. And then the second part was, speak, the 20th anniversary is coming up, and how do you feel about everybody bailing and there only being 10 confirmed? There's David Bale. Here's the story. You all want the inside scoop? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'll give you the first time here at Dallas Comic Con. Don't quote me on some of the stuff that I said. But a deal, a, not a deal memo, an invite went out to about 60 rangers, okay, approximately throughout the season, 60 or even more, that said, hey, you know, I got the letter. We're interested in maybe doing a reunion type of thing. Who would be interested? This is not a deal. This is not an offer. Blah, 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 blah. Just submit yes or no. So, of course, a couple of those guys got it. And yeah, they're only picking 10. So, they're picking 10 out of 60. You know they're not going to pick two or three from Mighty Morphin. They're probably not even going to pick two. They have so many other seasons they need to cover. So, a lot of people got rejected. They didn't hear from them. And then they spin it and say, well, I didn't get involved because, you know, it wasn't enough money. Look, guys, I'm... If you see me on Maker Force, I'm doing it for the fans, not the money. Because the fans want it, you fans make it. So, so uh, there, there was 10 on the list. So a lot of them, uh, 50 of them didn't get picked. So you know what's going to happen is rejection's hard in Hollywood. So of course you're going to spit it and blame the, the franchise and I didn't get money and I didn't get this and that. Um, you know, of course I would only go back to Mega Force if they, you know, pick their shirt. Color, yeah. but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, buddy. Sorry, I almost forgot. I couldn't see. Was blinded by the light. Blinded. Does anybody have a question for my wife? I just want to know what you can ask her, though. Anybody? <laughs> question for Tammy? Personal question? All right, very good. What do you think? Single? Do you want to know what single nunchucks are? Never mind. How? Well, how did she? How did, how did she meet you? Because I, I was doing the math. She would have married you about the time you were doing some Power Rangers again. She came up and said, hey, are you Tommy? And I was like, yeah, what's up? She said, <laughs> she said would you like to morph? I said, whoa. Said, Hold on. So she didn't know who I was. So I'm an actor. So like, yeah, right. Because everyone's actors. But uh, I was doing a Make-A-Wish Foundation thing. And, um, you know, sorry. And I said, hey, like the way you dance. And it worked. See what I'm saying? You guys like, oh, I like the way you dance. Really? That's so stupid. <laughs> like the single lunch of the snow machine. Okay, okay. It's working? Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah, Mr. Frank, um, just a quick question. Like, I, 
I gotta ask this question from a martial artist to a martial artist. How has your life as a martial artist changed after Power Rangers as far as notoriety, what you were able to accomplish, you know, handing out black belts to people that deserved them? Like, how has that life changed in the past 20 odd years? I mean, well, I've been in karate for, for since I was four. So karate was my whole entire life. You know, I was a young master when I booked the show. And uh, once I booked the show, my whole martial arts credentials went down. Did. No one took me serious, like, oh, you're all, you know, because everybody on the show is like, I'm a martial artist, and there's no credential. I mean, I'm a serious martial artist. Like, I have, you know, belts, and we trained, and my wife went to Thailand, if you all don't know. Uh, and then I'll get back to you. She went to February and had her first fight, because we're filming a reality show, so that's part of the, uh, that's part of the episode. But she fought in Thailand the last day there, and she won her first round, and she beat us in the girls. So. That's why we're missing her. But she also got her black belt. But once I started the show, it kind of like people, oh, do you really know karate? And you know, and the parents were like, oh yeah, my son watches uh, Power Rangers. It's a very good cartoon. And I'm like, baby, it's not a cartoon, you know? And because uh, they didn't understand it, and then parents were like, how do they recognize you with your mask on? I'm like, just come up and go, hey, you recognize me now? But um, anyway, <laughs> as far as you guys are probably wondering, how did she make it so long with it? So many years. Uh, um, but uh, the credentials went down. Then I started, you know, fighting the mixed martial arts. Once I got a little bit older, my style was accepted. People started to realize, oh, you are a real martial artist. You're not just a TV actor. Like um, Seagal. I know whoever thinks whatever. I have my own opinions about Seagal, but he is a true martial arts master from Japan and Aikido. Uh, a lot of people respect him. And then you go into the movie industry, and everyone, oh, you know. And then you have Van Damme who was not a true martial artist, who, you know, did flashy kicks and everybody hired him. So then he became, oh, you know, now he is, but he wasn't back then. You know, so it was very hard to balance the difference between, you know, television and, and real martial arts. But, you know, and of course, when I went to MMA, you know, it was like I had to think about, oh, you have so much to lose. And I was thinking, well, let's just spin the tables. Let's say you fought me and you beat up the Green Ranger, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. You know how many kids around the world are going to hate? And then if you get beat up by the Green Ranger, oh, dude, seriously, you got beat up by the Green Ranger? <laughs> so, I had a win-win, so I just had to develop it and keep, keep pushing it and stuff like that. And I'm a real martial artist. You know, and uh, we love karate, we love Muay Thai, we love Master Thai. A very funny guy. So, uh, Thank my you. Answer, uh, uh, real quick, I mean, yeah. I, speak for, I hope I can speak for everybody in here. I mean, in a world as crazy as this one, you know, people need their heroes, and Tommy Oliver was a lot of our heroes when we were younger. And, uh, thank, you. thank you for helping out of us on your uh, Thank you, man. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Uh, over here. Alright, uh, I got a two parts real quick, but one of them is just a dumb question. But the real one is um, the first Mighty Morphin Power Ranger movie that came out. The suit, the outfits you guys had in that, I thought were a lot better than the ones from the show since it was kind of felt like you had armor on as well yeah. as had the power. In your opinion, did you like which suit did you like better from the original Power Rangers compared to the movie that came out first? I, I thought the movie suits looked cool. The only problem is they were worn armor, they were rubber. <laughs> so they were like, you know, rubber, they weighed like 50 pounds. Today, I know they can make super cool suits, super lightweight and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I liked them, and just wearing them was like, Ridiculous, you know, super heavy. And um, moving around, they look cool though. I mean, I like the, you know, they, they, until they took the visors out and the mouthpiece out and the fox just went crazy. And, you know, they like filmed so much, I was like, this is so stupid. Like, our visors are off, our mouth is off. And, you know, we're like, how do you look? They're like, you look dumb, so do you. <laughs> it's like, can you recognize me? You know? It's like, yeah, I can so recognize you. That's What's the point of that, you know? So, and, but it was, the, the movie suits were cool. The dumb question was, um, I thought that was. No, I'm just There's no dumb questions here. How did you deal with your hair in those helmets? Yes. Um, you know what? Uh, Maybe it's not a dumb question. I thought the early was hey, No, it was a lot of, I think a lot of guys didn't really wear their suits in their helmet, but I did because we ran out of Japanese footage. So, you know, it was like I had to fight Jason in the Dark Dimension, and then it went season one, and they're like, we'll get a stunt double, and it was like, dude, it looks nothing like me, and you know. So, but, uh, but yeah, I dealt with it very carefully. <laughs> oh, my hair, my ears, stop it. Let me run the moment. I got three quick questions. First of all, happy anniversary. Thank uh, you. On your anniversary here. Also, uh, when I first met you, I met you at Six Weeks in Chicago, and you, uh, um, you 
had some personal things going on uh, with a friend in the hospital, and you still came out and saw us. So we really appreciate it. I, again, speaking for everyone here, Thank everything you. you got going on, we really appreciate you coming out and, and honoring us and, and visiting with us. It's a great honor to be here. Um, my first question I have is, uh, during the panel this two weeks, we were talking about a laser, and this question is kind of for your wife. How do you, did he get the laser, and how do you feel about that? <laughs> you said he was going to like burn the board.
kind of weird. Because then you start really looking at it, and they're like, you know, and then they, they kind of like a stock generic face sometimes, and you're like, look at this, Trini kind of looks like Tommy, but, you know. Ah. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of weird. Did you see the Dino Thunder big one with the helmet off and stuff? You, you see it? That's pretty cool. It's like a big one with the helmet off, and it's, you know, got a beard or whatever. It's just, you know, it's like a stock head, but it kind of looks Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Hi, Jason. Hi, uh, You are my favorite. Sorry if I stutter. Uh, you, congratulations on breaking the boards. Thank you. What's next for you in that? Uh, like, what else do you want to achieve in the Guinness, breaking it in Guinness? Um, I don't know. That was just fun to do. I'll try to set something. <laughs> think of something. I'll always think of something. All right. Well, happy anniversary. Thank you, buddy. Did anybody Thank think you so for him to break? Hey, people do say, kick me, hit me, punch me, for real. And then, like, I used to all the time, like, okay, you know. And uh, they're like, oh, oh, my, yes, I just got kicked out of bed. I got kicked from Tommy, and I'm, like, all excited about it. So I was like, hey, punch me. I was like, okay. Oh, you really punched me. You told me to punch you. Dude, I'm in the business of uh, making customers happy.
What time is it? You know, and I almost said it's morphin time, but they were really asking the time. I was like, <laughs> you know, like I would have felt so stupid. They would have been like, "Cool, dude. We don't even know who you are." <laughs> so I'm really careful when people ask that now. It's like, what time is it? Uh, no, the people all waiting in the background. They, uh, they're, 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 
me for the next one. Oh, really? Can you guys step out of the room? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That was a joke. That was a joke. Just a few more questions. Come on. Don't leave. You really did leave? Close the doors. Lock it. Yes. Uh, I was just wondering, what was it like fighting a giant green purple booger in your first movie? Uh, that's right, he was a booger. Uh, it was a very sticky situation. Uh, it kind of bugged me a little bit, you know. He, that guy was just a little booger. It was just, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, he just stuck around. You know? And we fling him around, and he would stick to things, and you know, couldn't get him off. What's up, buddy? What's up, Jason? Um, quick question. Uh, I've seen your fights in MMA, and I know it's kind of off topic, not power for the congratulations on your career and your power rankings, but any possibility of maybe shaking things up in the UFC? You know what? I, oh, man, it's, it's, I was telling my wife, like, everybody who I sparred with and everybody's going to the UFC, they're all like, just gone, gone, you know? I love fighting. It's just I've been overbooked this year, and I love meeting fans. It's so hard, you know? It's like, uh, punch people in the face or beat fans and punch them in the face because they want it. You know, it's just hard. <laughs> but, uh, what was your name? Ruben or no? Uh, was Chewy. I got my yeah, yeah. brother Ruben. What did I sign up for? Ruben? Uh, or, uh, no, Chewy and Chewy. That's right. right. Okay. I remember. But uh, yeah, it'd be great, man. I'd love to fight. It's just it takes eight complete weeks of just nothing but silence. I need to train. I can't go in there and then blame something for something. Like, oh, we have one week of training. And, you know, I like to take full responsibility for anything that I do. I don't think that someone should just go into it and just half, you know, you got to go into it fully passionate about what you do. And I do like the Q&As, but I do want to tell someone, if you, if you did leave the room with something, right, as long as it's not my wall or my pocket book or my wife, but, um, and if you do get my wife, it's half the bills, all right? Um, just kidding. But uh, I want you guys to leave and think about, hey, if there's something that you do, that you're not doing because you're passionate about it. I really think you guys can achieve that because if you're passionate about what you do, you can't think of anything else. You can't think of the money. You can't think of, I'm doing it for this. You have to do it for yourself. And if you do it, then I believe the talent will shine. The minute someone gets into something for just for a quick buck, they're not going to make it. And um, that's, that's what I want you guys to leave is thinking that if there's something you do, we all have a place in life and you have a certain place and a certain gift and you can't let people talk you down because I was talked down in Hollywood that I need to be grown in, I need to be raised into the family of being an actor. I need to be raised into the business like everyone else and I really disagree with that because then if that's the fact, then who got into the business? Someone must have broke the mold sometimes. Not everybody's born. There's someone that came, success stories, it's not about money. Success is like where you came from in life, how much you've changed, and what you've gone through, and where you're going today. And are you still running the marathon? You know what I mean? And um, I think it's important for us to continue the marathon and never tap out and never give up. And that's for the youth. That's for you guys are like my children anyway. You know, like and I think of you guys as kids. That's why I don't really. I mean, some of my panels, but I don't drop my guest bombs and stuff like you know because you guys are still kids. You know? And uh, even though I'm only I'm maybe 28, um, it's just. Uh, <laughs> She's a little older than me, but you know how it is. But, uh, but no, and I, I do want to thank all you guys for coming today. I do want to say happy anniversary to my wife, because today is the anniversary. Yeah. Thank you.
lifted up the lasers and you're going to say, oh man, we got to morph. And then you're going to dive roll off the stage. And then you're going to stand up and say, it's morphing time, okay? But you got to be fast. Watch the laser. You died. Okay? When you have to dump the laser, watch the laser. You died. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Woo. All right. Man, that was pretty fast. Perfect. Can okay, now we do a kick. Alright, now we do a kick. 